This is lab seven on the dog specimen. So we are working still on the pelvic limb, but doing some more muscles of the caudal aspect of the crus, and then a few items to do with joints on today's lab. So just as a quick review, we're cranial aspect of the limb here. So cranial, tibial, and then you have long digital extensor, and then fibularis longus here. So we've already done all of those muscles, so now we're looking at the caudal group here. We're going to start with gastrocnemius, and so you have two heads to the gastrocnemius, and it's here is the lateral head. And then if I lift up the limb a little bit, hopefully, there we go, we can see the medial head here. But also in between those two heads is the superficial digital flexor, and so we're going to have to be careful when we are dissecting the gastrocnemius. So I usually come down actually to the tendons, and if I can, so this tendon is actually the superficial digital flexor that's coming out between the two heads of the gastrocnemius. So I usually start there and work my way up and kind of separate that out so I don't end up cutting my superficial digital flexor when I don't mean to. Okay, so on the lateral side, you'll dissect out your gastrocnemius heads and transect. I usually only transect the lateral side, but you can transect both sides if needed. So I transect the lateral head and then just kind of peel it back. As I'm going from the tendon down here, I kind of peel it out away from the lateral head of gastroc as I go. So this is superficial digital flexor in between those two heads. So this is lateral head of gastrocnemius, and then this over here is going to be the medial head of gastrocnemius superficial digital flexor in between. And if you reflect the stump of gastrocnemius, in the book they're telling you to look for this sesamoid bone that's right here. So if you can, you can see that. Then superficial digital flexor will end up being transected as well so that we can see some of these deep digital flexors. However, on the back side, caudal edge, so ca the common calcanean tendon is where all of these things come together and then go over the hock. So you want to try and slip the superficial digital flexor tendon off of the hock there and see the calcanean, calcaneal bursa right there. So that shininess underneath the tendon. So usually you can go to one side or the other, either lateral or medial, just on either side of that superficial digital flexor tendon and peel it off and you'll be able to see that. Then we have deep digital flexor muscles. So we've reflected these to hopefully be able to see our deep digital flexors. I'm just gonna put that over there, out of the way. So deep digital flexors are going to be here. You'll have two heads to that deep digital flexor, and then we have the popliteus muscle. So if we start up here, popliteus is actually going to be the most cranial of the group, or most proximal of the group, I guess, from this angle, right here. And then you will have a medial head, medial digital flexor, right here. And you can see the separation is right here. Sometimes they're a little hard to differentiate from each other in this area. But popliteus is here, the medial digital flexor, and then the lateral digital flexor. I'm going to flip this over just a little bit to see if we can see it from this angle where the tendons come down. So here again we have that lateral digital flexor, and then you'll have your medial head that comes down. This is the tendon of the medial head. I know this isn't the best view, but you can transect your gastrocnemius if needed also. And then those two tendons actually go through and join. So you have your flexor retinaculum, just like we did in the forelimb. You have a flexor retinaculum here holding those tendons in place. And so you're just going to cut through that and then hopefully be able to pull those out of there. So the deep digital flexor here. So this one is going to be the lateral head and then the other part is the medial head. But you can see they come together right there. So both together there, coming together just below the hock there. So those are the deep digital flexors. And then there's one tiny little muscle that usually we don't see too much in the dog. But this tiny little tendon is the caudal tibial mus muscle, tendon, <laughs> tendon of the muscle. Um, in the cat, it will be a little more appreciable, but that's the caudal tibial. Okay, then uh, just a few of the joint structures of the knee. 
So you'll be doing joints on one of the animals in your group, and it's kind of a destructive procedure, so I'll just point out a few of the items. Um, we're on the lateral side, so this is the stifle joint, and this is going to be the lateral collateral ligament of the stifle joint. And then you can also see right here is the lateral meniscus. And then if I flip our biceps over, you're again looking at that patella and patellar ligament. If I can turn the limb here a little bit. And so the patella, if you flip this down and cut across your quadriceps, there's the patella and the patellar ligament obviously attached to it. I'm gonna pull that down. And then here, maybe I'll go to the other side and pull this back so you can see inside the knee. So here you're going to have your cruciate ligaments. So the one inserting cranially on the tibia, so this one right here, is the cranial cruciate. And the other one that you see going caudally, it will insert caudally on the tibia, so that is going to be the caudal cruciate ligament. Then here you have your medial meniscus. And then you go a little bit further and you have there we go, the medial collateral ligament of the stifle joint. Then in the hip area, just a couple of things that I can point out on this dog. So you kind of have to dig and pull out some fascia, but you'll be able to see this is the hip joint. And here you can see that ligament of the femoral head right there. It's attaching to the head of the femur right here. So ligament of the femoral head. And then in your acetabulum, you have your transverse acetabular ligament right here. And that should be it, I believe, for things I can show you on this dog anyway in Lab 7.